Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vintage Super League. Uh, I'm Luis Scott Vargas here with Kai, who uh, came off a pretty tough match there against Chris there. Well, I mean, this time I can't complain at least. Uh, I think I would have won that if I didn't throw away the second Kataki. Uh, I think that is fairly likely, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's guaranteed, because the sword kind of forces the jump block, otherwise it just shoots it down. But even if that thing just gets a jump block, and I probably I might get enough time to draw out of that stuff. Yeah, it, was, um, it, would, uh, it would have certainly have been close, but... Yeah. I mean, it's a 2-1 for 2, like, how is that a legend? I mean, I've actually <laughs> never played. Point. I've never actually played with or against the card. Like, I just didn't play Magic when that was a, a current standard card. But still, I mean, that was embarrassing. Uh, I mean, game one, obviously, like, yes, yeah. he could have not chosen a better, better first two turns if he handpicked the cards. And I, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to keep the second hand. I, mean, uh, I, I, think, I, I, I think you were. It was, you know, the six with a lot of the cards you want to see you just needed to draw, like, fast mana of some kind. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I don't have that much fast mana in my deck, so... Like, I think you can even make a point to keep the first hand and just hope he doesn't have an explosive draw. But obviously, if I keep that and he has that the draw that he had, the game just ends on turn two. Yeah, you're, you're, not beating, you're not beating the turn one thorn, lodestone, golem, turn two sword equip hand with almost anything. So. Yeah, sure. I mean, if I actually drew a white mana there to sort that thing. He had, like, no cards in hand. Yeah, he's, maybe. His last card was a Ravager, so he probably would have been able to kill oh. you still, but, yeah, I mean, why, why, why wouldn't it be? Yeah. <laughs> I also made a pretty big mistake in deck construction, actually. Um, in the last minute, I removed the, the enchantment for white one that stops activated abilities from artifacts. Mm, Stony Silence. For, yeah, for, for whatever reason, because I was thinking I had Vault Key, but it was two Enlightened Tutors, I'm pretty sure I, I'm supposed to have that in my deck. And mm -hmm. it would be really good against Chris. Like, probably better than Energy Flux, even. Yeah, it, it, the fact that it stops Swords and Ravagers is, is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Rich Shea brings up that uh, your Invitational card is a 2-1 Legend for two, so... <laughs> yeah, but that thing is unplayable, so... <laughs> I, I guess mean. you probably don't know what that does, either. <laughs> uh, I... <laughs> Barely do, yes, I do. I didn't. I, I was not aware that it was a legend, though. To be, to be honest, I mean, yeah. why would that be a legend? Yeah, the source material is not legendary, so I don't see why that would be a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not anymore. So our next match. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's also just not a legend, <laughs> Mister Doctor Shea is unfortunately <laughs> wrong there. The creature human wizard. Right, was, yeah. I, I was surprised for a moment because I was pretty sure that that thing wasn't legendary. <laughs> You could have fooled me. I honestly don't know what it does either. So, <laughs> I mean, it counter stuff. Uh, yeah, that it does. If they printed it with the blue devotion block, it actually would have been a good card. Oh yeah, it but would have been great. It would have been really good. Yeah, but back when it was printed, that blue creatures were not a thing. That, yeah, that was not playable. Rich is so, pointing out, Chad, that he definitely said it was a legend. Uh, so our uh, next match is again is Tom Martell against Randy Bueller. Randy hoping to play, <laughs> play bizarre Baghdad at some point. <laughs> so, so, so Randy, like on paper, Randy probably has a eighty percent matchup in game one or something. Uh, I would be surprised if it wasn't even a little higher. Uh, okay, so I mean, that pro <laughs> that probably means that Tom will go turn one mental time walk, right? Yeah, it, I I think that. Uh, Tom's win, in order, his win percentage is, does Randy miss on Bizarre, which he already did twice last week against me, followed by the insane Mentor Lotus Time Walk Hand. Because I, I played a lot of Mentor Pyromancer decks against Dredge. Sometimes I just scoop game one even on, like, turn one, just because you know you can't win. You mulligan to four, looking for Lotus Time Walk, and you still just can't win. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. But uh, post-board, Tom actually has a decent amount of stuff. His... He has five very good cards. He's got a uh, rest in peace okay. containment priest, and oh, okay. uh, I, so he he's in, and uh, even uh, I think one graph digger's cage. But uh, he I thought he has two happen. cages and two um, two rest in peace. I'm and, not one hundred percent, but yeah, and, and he's got oh well, he's got at least one containment priest as well. So it is a uh, the sort of thing where he actually has outs. Some 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 people did not bring very much dredge hate and. Tom was un was luck luckily enough had a kind of like the midpoint of, of Dredge Hate here. Yeah, so yeah. he's got 
Okay, yeah, he's got the one containment priest, two Grafter's Cage, two Rest in Peace. I mean, Randy, Randy was saying that he was playing against two mid-range dirty blue decks, but I mean, I actually have, I, I don't think you can have much more Dread Shade than I have in, in a blue deck. Like, I even have the Rest in Peace main deck, and then I bought into more Rest in Peace and Cages. Yeah, but, you're, I mean, your deck is quite quite more hateful than, than Tom's. Tom's, again, he does have Outpost board, game one's going to be tough, and it sounds like they're ready to go, so actually, we could we can head out of the match. Let's go. All right, and uh, there is a bizarre bag. And in fact, too, Randy's hand looks great. This is this is the kind of hand you want with Dredge. It has bizarre bag, Dad. But uh, <laughs> on, the, on seven, are you kidding on seven? me? With with the second bizarre, it, you know, Tom will take that if that means that his post board games are a lot worse. Because Tom, Tom's game one again is just very hard. Like Tom just keeps has to keep mulliganing here. The game's going to be over on turn two. There's no way you can keep that, right? That hand doesn't do anything. No, I don't. I don't think that hand does a whole lot. Yeah, Tom's deciding whether he wants to go to go to five here. Thing is, there's no real punishment for going to five. You, none of your cards do anything. You might as well try to look for again. Lotus, Time Walk, and Mentor. Those, that's like I mean, he's, out. he's just losing right now. So seems like it's better to go to five. I mean, yeah. Randy obviously has a workshop. He kept seven. So no, he, he's got a. He probably has a bizarre over a workshop. Though there uh, is a bizarre. deck in the league uh, in the league that's playing both bizarre and workshop. We're gonna see it yeah, play that, tonight. <laughs> that seems pretty bad, but I mean, well, uh, whoever it is who's playing that's probably meta game pretty well and is one up. So. Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, did he keep that? I think. Oh wow. Tom, Tom kept, and he was on the play, so he's probing to to draw whatever he scried into, I suppose. Hmm. He's, he sees Randy's hand. He could probably just pack it up uh, pretty qu pretty quickly. Here. I mean, there's no dredge at least. Like maybe all the dredges in the last fifteen cards so, or something. That's probably still not good enough. But. It it would be tough. It would be tough uh, for for Randy to miss too much here. Actually, Tom Tom drew a mox. Like that that is pretty good. Scrying into a mox because now he can go. He can see Randy's hand. He knows Randy's not going to do anything on turn one. He can go land mox snapcaster probe to try to play turn two Dak Faden. To try to like pretend like he's getting to play a game of magic. Bell snare doesn't do anything. Swords doesn't do anything. Deck Faden hardly does anything. I mean, it just let's have exch any. exchange those cards for cards that do something. Unlikely. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take another look at Randy's hand here. Still a dredge deck. Sorry, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> the bazaars are still there. Randy's not going to serum powder. <laughs> Gush, not really what you're looking for. I'm not even sure what he's looking for. I mean, maybe... A, a, a land to play a... Dak Faden is the start. Yeah. Oh, not quite. Uh, it's a Mox Emerald. <laughs> that does not do it, no. He's getting in for two. Oh, he's performing above above expectation in terms of what's going to happen here. We did not expect Tom to get on the board. No, Tom, that doesn't work. Even if you click on it. <laughs> so Bazaar is going to get activated. Randy did already draw Narco, but now he hit Blood Gas. So there's a chance that Randy, even if he misses on Dredgers, can assemble some kind of like Blood Gas, Bridge from Below, Icarid combination. But it's going to be tough. He he missed on Dredger so far. He's going to draw a lot more cards over the next couple of turns. Oh yeah, upkeep bizarre again. You want a bizarre and upkeep. So if you draw a Dredger, you can discard it. The Dredge on your draw step. All right, Randy decides to in fact activate bizarre. Still missed on mm. Dredgers. Uh. But Thomas. Randy, what he can do? He can discard Bridge in Cabal Therapy. And then play Bazaar, get back Bloodgast, sack Bloodgast to Bridge, uh, or to Cabal Therapy, and trigger Bridge twice. It's better than what Tom is doing. He can also, if he wants, he can play Undiscovered Paradise and hardcast Cabal Therapy, but I think you, you want to just keep using the Bazaars here. Like, the, yeah. the, the, the way you lose this is missing on, on Dredgers, and the, the, so the faster you Bazaar, the more, the more likely you are to hit. Yeah, I agree. I think he just wants to keep using Bazaars.
There we go. Nope. <laughs> Randy's gonna now he's bizarre flooded. This is the opposite of last week. <laughs> <laughs> so you should have mulliganed to Bazaar and Dredge. Come on. Yeah, what was, what was he thinking? All right, so now he's going to get a couple... He actually hit three bridges, though, so he can get three zombies, which Tom probably can't beat. <laughs> 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 like that's, that's very sad, but yeah. As Ifro does point out, though, if Tom could kill Snapcaster, Tom would actually be okay because it would exile all those bridges. The problem is Swords to Plasters doesn't do that. Can't even cast Swords right now anyway. I think that uh, t Tom is not... He's not flooded with ways to kill Snapcaster. It does mean that uh, Randy might want to wait a couple turns before attacking, but... Does he even still. have any in his deck? I'm not sure he does. I think in his... In his main deck, he, he does not have a ton of ways. Oh, on. there's a Lightning Bolt and the Pyroblast in this deck, so eh, that's, that's something. Yeah. So, Tom decided to let Cabal Therapy resolve, which I think makes sense. Randy's not naming any of the cards that are in Tom's hand currently, or at least is unlikely to. And then now you can just save your spell pierce for later. I mean, the go-to is always Force of Will. Yeah. yeah, which is in fact what got named. Randy was telling me that his deck usually goldfishes on turn two. That doesn't seem that impressive right now. Yeah, it... It can't, I don't know if it usually does, but it certainly can goldfish on turn two. I was playing a, a match earlier with with, uh, with my deck. I was playing against Dredge. He went first, and I had a turn two rest in peace, and he almost won. <laughs> I was very impressed without killing the rest in peace. He, he almost managed to. What, what did he What did he end up doing? What, he had turn two. He put a Golgari Gravesol into play, and he had some some two twos into play, so. And then you played Rest in Peace, and then he almost killed you with the rest. Yep. But I thought if I have turned to Rest in Peace, I'm good. But yeah, apparently not. And Tom still has nothing. So Tom drew the Force of Will. He, he, he played around Gataxian Probe. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough here. Because he can't do anything. And Randy is... Yeah, he eventually just hit a dredge card. So now, now Randy's going to be able to go off within like one turn or something. Yeah, now he's going to find more dredge cards... And his graveyard will fill very fast. Yeah, I think Tom is not going to find a way out of this position. I think even if he had the, the Pyro Blaster Lightning Bolt to kill Snapcaster earlier, it would have been pretty tough uh, to, to come back. Even okay. if he stacked his library from here, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right, well... At least post board is where Dredge starts to lose percentage. I mean, you play Dredge for the game one percentage. Tom immediately snapping those five cards into his deck and uh, deciding what, what he wants to end up cutting. Randy, as he mentioned in the pregame show, Randy has a little bit of trouble here because he doesn't have very many cards that hit all of Tom's cards. Like, he has Serenity. But cards like Ingature, for example, they only hit part of Tom's hate, which is... Part of the reason that you do something like what Tom did and play a, a mix of enchantments, creatures, and artifacts. In fact, the yeah. Priest doesn't get Serenity either. Quite often the Dredge decks have Nature's Claim, but Randy wanted to get around Mental Misstep. Yeah, he's got no but Mental Misstep targets pretty much besides Cabal Therapy. That means that he can't cover both of the hate cards in Tom's deck. And Tom does have a lot of cantrips to find them, but he probably needs one of them in his opening hand, I think. Well, one of the reasons I like playing hate cards like Rest in Peace and Graft Digger's Cage in Mentor instead of something like Leyland of the Void is the blue decks that can cantrip a lot. I think you want to be able to dig to your first hate piece, and Leyland of the Void doesn't really do that. But do you keep, like, a hand with, like, let's say, two lands, a Mox, and a Priodane? No, I don't, I, I don't think you keep that, right? Yeah. I generally don't, but when you're on six, often you'll have to keep a hand closer to that or on five. And sure. I th think being able to, again, scry or cantrip into a hate card is pretty important. So, looks like Randy's ready to go. Tom debating on his last sideboard shot whether he wants Fluster Storm to stop some of Randy's, well, his, his removal spells, or he wants Swords to Plushers, which is not a, not, not a particularly exciting card, but, you know, since it has some, some relevance. 
So um, that's it's a snap keep for Tom. I mean, this this hand is this is the perfect hand. Randy, of course, has to mulligan this. Well, with a mox, it would be the perfect hand. But... True, but e even without a mox, Tom goes land go. Randy goes bizarre go. Tom goes land rest in peace with force of will backup. It should be good enough, yeah. And the spell piece can also stop your th therapy. Oh, so rather Randy's serum powdered, yes. He had a serum powder. So Also note, Randy had a barbarian ring. That's his uh, anti-containment priest technology. He also can pick off a monastery mentor. <laughs> hmm. Randy's hand is pretty good, right? I mean, uh, yeah, although he does, I mean, he's got the Ingo Chua, and Tom is going to cast Rest in Peace. So. Hmm. But Randy, Randy, sir, I mean, this is what you're looking for. It's got a bazaar and a uh, mana confluence and one of your hate, hate, anti-hate cards. So you, this is kind of your optimal hand. It's just missing a dredge card, I guess. Yeah, but Tom has a rest in peace and the force to protect it and the mentor to have a fast clock. So, yeah, again, Tom hand, Tom's hand might just be perfect. Yeah, I quite like Tom's position right now. Because you get to just drop rest in peace. You have force of will. The lightning bolt's not really what you want, but everything else is great. You can even force pitching spell pierce and then go untap if you miss on lands. Gush play mentor. Because one of the ways to lose with rest in peace in play is not presenting a clock, and eventually bazaars find multiple answers. But right now, Randy's short his first answer, and he doesn't have a lot of time because that mentor is going to come down. And mentors kill very fast. <laughs> Three mm, turns Tom, at most with that many spells. Tom did not playing the rest in peace. Wow, that is that's aggressive. I the problem is what if. What if Randy hits like some combinations of like blood ghasts and and or Icarids and bridge like even with a spell pierce and a force of will in hand you can still you yeah can still that's exactly not in a great shape that's exactly what I was saying before like my opponent just had turn two a sixteen sixteen and five two twos in play I mean yeah. sure you can cast rest in peace but like you're still dying most of the time yeah like Tom, Tom uh, looks like a I don't know why it says Tom's triggered abilities, but uh, Randy did hit a Narcomoeba there. So Randy's going to get a Narcomoeba and a Bloodgast at the very least. Hmm. Which, you know, I do think that Tom can deal with. He does have Lightning Bolt and Mentor, but I, now he has to play Rest in Peace turn two instead of playing Monastery Mentor. I don't know. This seems this seems like a it's a little bit clever. Like Tom's trying to do something clever here, and I, I don't know if I buy it. <laughs> and I mean, on... Top of that, Randy, I mean, he, Tom just snap kept a seven card hand. Like, Randy n needs to expect that there's something coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, turn two rest in peace, turn three mentor with a force in hand. It seems so powerful. All right, well, Tom actually just told me that he, he, he accidentally clipped through his turn. So. Ah, that <laughs> makes a lot more sense. Oh, well, it may, it it does make more sense. It's unfortunate still, but <laughs> yeah, well, it's certainly a more forgivable misplay than casting two legends. <laughs> Look, we're saving all the perfect play for Mini Fres match. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I mean, even if you cast the rest in peace, I mean. It just be too far behind. Um, I think the mentor still could get him out of here, mm. but I don't know if that's actually. I I mean, it's it's obviously like much more of a risk than uh than he would have been otherwise. But it's it's not it's definitely not game over. Like if Randy hits really hard on this on this bazaar, but I guess Randy gets to dread return and make nine zombies here. Nah, never mind. Randy's still just gonna I think win this game probably. Yeah, he hit the therapy. Well, he hit the therapy, and again, he already had three bridges and a dread return, so that was already enough zombies that I don't think Tom could win even with even with a, a rest a mentor next turn. I don't think he has any any mess removal, right? No, no, he does not. He doesn't have anything. That's unfortunate. He probably wins the game if he if he doesn't have six. Uh, yeah. I, I don't see how Tom... Well, Tom realistically couldn't have lost the game had he played Rest in Peace on turn two. Like, Randy would have to hit a way to remove it and then another way to remove it off zero to, you know, to begin with. And then he's... Like, after that, he still has to do all the setup work. And, I mean, 
Tom is winning pretty quickly. Yeah. So Tom is going to spell Pierce the Cabal Therapy because he knows that's naming uh, Force of Will. Should when, he just be lightning bolting the blood guess now? Doesn't that get rid of the bridges or something? No, he has to kill his own creature to get rid of bridges. Oh, it was his own creature. So yeah, never mind. Yeah. Which is, I mean, he could do that next turn, I guess, but that's going to be too late. And then rest in peace gets rid of them anyway. But yeah. Could you just animate the grave troll now? Probably, right? If he doesn't have a zealot, which would make sense, yeah, I think that uh, the grave troll is uh, is a pretty good option. Yeah, so he ends up with eight two twos and whatever that grave troll is. Uh, I assume Tom's going to force the world to dread return, but yeah, still losing to the two twos. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Tom can beat the two twos. Also, Tom has to. Tom has to then play Mentor, but he has to play Rest in Peace turn too. Otherwise, he just loses to the kind of the same things next turn. Yeah, so, and next turn surely Randy will be able to dredge enough to find his Flame Kinsellet. So, mm. one zombie down. Oh yeah, take take that. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Yeah, if Tom drew a lotus, could he be in it? <laughs> well, let's see. Tom exiles everything, takes 14 down to 5, draws lotus, plays mentor, probes into time walk, draws gush, draws ancestral. Yeah, I was about, I was about to say, like, <laughs> any chain here includes the gush. <laughs> he needs to get yes. up in cards as well. But yeah, I mean, if he could stack his deck, he probably has a chance. I, I think but, Tom would win if he got to stack his deck, but we're talking about a pretty low percentage. That's uh, yeah, a very big poly. I mean, I guess he's, he still had a chance that Randy clicks through his turn, but that didn't happen. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, we should have seen the third game here, but... I think so, yeah. So Dredge won the match. We it, can, it, we can... kind of, there's an asterisk there, but yeah, what a match. We, we blame it on misclicks. It's fine. Sure. So uh, Dredge wins an exciting match <laughs> to advance to 1-1 in, in, in the Super League here. You're battling Randy next week. I, if you draw Rest in Peace, I would advise playing it on turn 2. Yeah. That would be pretty skillful. I, I don't think I can board in any Legends, so I'm probably good <laughs> in that department. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it would be I, if I lose to Randy, then Dredge just has a positive record. And, I mean, come on. Yeah, well, we can't have that. I mean, there, there, <laughs> there are rules here. <laughs> yes, there are rules, and that can't happen. Yeah. So, uh, looks like up next we've got a, a pretty nice match. We've got David Ochoa against Stephen Menendian. And uh, we'll, we'll, it's Oof. a doomsday, doomsday against Workshops. So, we'll, we'll see if Workshops can, can advance. That, that, is, that is pretty good for, for David, surely, right? Like, I think his workshop think so. list is also a pretty hateful workshop list. Yeah, he, 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 as everyone watching the stream, if they're here from the beginning, heard, or if they're here last week, David submitted his LCQ workshop deck with without extra spheres because he thought he had them and he put metal workers in instead and then realized he was only playing four spheres instead of the the seven or eight he wanted to play but th this week he's got all he's got like like seven or eight and he's playing against workshops or uh, against doomsday so it's a lot better for him yeah yeah I, I like his chances in that much for sure yep definitely uh so we're gonna go to a commercial break here but we'll be back in a couple minutes <laughs> 